Hello everyone, how are you doing today? I'm back with another video and in today's video we have a Dell laptop. This one is a Dell Inspiron 5570. The regulatory model for this one is a T75F. Those information can be found on the bottom label on the need of the laptop. And in this video I'm going to go over the few combination of the storage that you can have in here and what are the best and suitable storage combination that you can have and what are the best drives that you can have in here. These laptops are shipped out uh, with a one terabyte or sometimes with two terabyte mechanical hard drive. But we know these are iCore 5, 8 gen laptops. Sometimes you get them with the iCore 7. So it pretty much the bottleneck on this uh, laptop is the hard drive because the mechanical hard drive is way slower than the solid state drive. So I would recommend you guys always to grab yourself a mechanical drive or replace your laptop with mechanical drive with a solid state drive. But if you can have both, it's better because you can put windows and you file storage on a mechanical drive. So let's, I'm going to open it up and we're going to see what's underneath and what are the combinations that we, we can have in here. Before we continue, I'll need you guys to note that once you upgrade the hard drive, replace the hard drive in here, you will not have any operating system or your files, everything will be on an old drive. So you want to back up. Um, your files on a cloud-based backup or external storage, your files, everything that you need. And with those uh, on a backed up, you want to power off the laptop completely. Uh, you want to flip the laptop upside down and you're going to need a screwdriver set. I'm going to be using an iFixit screwdriver set. From this screwdriver set, we're going to be using a Phillips number zero. If you get the pro version, you get an opening tool and a few other uh, stuff, uh, tweezers, but if you don't want, just get a simple screwdriver set and for the opening tools, we're going to be using a guitar pick. A metallic guitar picks are really suitable to opening cases and covers. So with this on hand, we're going to start removing all the screws on the bottom of the laptop. There's a first row at the back by the hinges. These three screws, they will not come out entirely, so you pretty much, you have to loose them up and they will just come out a little bit and just wiggle around in there. So leave them like that. So just loose them up. Once you loose them up and go ahead and remove all the screws. This one is a short screw, so go ahead and remove all of them. Keep the short one in a different pile so you don't lose them. And you can use a magnet to pull them out if they don't want to come out. So I'm going to put a magnet right here. If you guys like my videos, if my videos are helping you guys out to do your own upgrade and uh, servicing, you can click that like and subscribe to the channel to support the channel. I really appreciate it. It really motivates me to make more videos, take requests, answer your questions in the comment area. I really appreciate that. All right, once we remove all the screws, now what you want to do, you want to open up the laptop in 45 degree angle, or a little bit more if you want, if you have room. And you want to stick the guitar pick, the opening tool between the palm rest and the bottom cover, just like that. And all you need to do is you want to twist it back and you want to hear that click sound. That's what you want to hear. You, those are the clips that are getting loose. You want to do that all the uh, row in the front end. You, the same thing, you want to go to the side towards the back. Do the left and right side in here. There. And once you do the front and the side, you want to close up the laptop. And you want to put it upside down again. Now you're going to grab the front end of the laptop, which is already loose. And you want to lift it up, wiggle it around a little bit. And the back end will come out straight. Those are the screws that I'm saying they're not coming out, so they just stay there. All right. And down here, we're going to see right away the mechanical hard drive. And people always say, like, you know what, disconnect, why don't you disconnect the battery? You have to disconnect the battery. You do not need to disconnect the battery to do RAM upgrades or replace your hard drive. Absolutely not necessary. But if you want to be one of those paranoid person, just put your fingers at the back of the jack right there, right here. And then you want to pull it back and the jack will get disconnected but you don't actually need to put it back in make sure it's straight facing and push it towards the jack all right there's your mechanical hard drive and in here there's an, another m.2 slot right here people are gonna ask me if this is m.2 pci express yes it is a pci express yes you can put an nvme and yes you should put an nvme solid state drive in here and put your windows in here rather than an uh, SSD SATA port, which will be right here. 
These are uh, M. Dot, these are SATA drives. These have a limit of speed read and write, but M.2 NVMEs are much faster than this regular SATA. So I recommend it grab a one terabyte or two terabyte, whatever you can afford, put it in here or 500 gig in case you want. I'll leave the link for a few of the good SSD drives if you guys want to purchase. The best ones out there are the Samsung Evo uh, Pros. These are one of the best ones, but if you don't want to get this one, you can get a cheap one, which is a a data or Kingston or anything like that. In this case, I have an A data one terabyte. These are NVMe drives. To put this one in here, they do actually include you with a screwdriver. You want to remove this screw right here. And you want to grab the M NVMe, make sure the notch matches the notch on the dim. You want to bring it down in 10 or 15 degrees, just like that. And you want to slide it all the way towards the jack. Make sure it clicks in. And then you want to bring it down and allow, make sure the screw holes all matches right there and put the screw right in there, right over, just like that. Okay. Once you have that one in there, that's how you install the M.2 NVMe right there. If you want to remove your mechanical drive or add an SSD drive or put a two terabyte mechanical drive, remove the four screws that holds the caddy in place, which is a bracket that holds the hard drive in there. There are two in the front and two in the back. And you can go ahead and remove these ones. And there were two in the back. Right there. Now you can lift it up gently, slowly bring it up. There's a flex cable that goes right here. You want to just put your finger right there and pull it out. Pull the hard drive back so you don't pull the jack, this flex cable. Leave it right there. So there's a one terabyte Seagate hard drive. You can replace this one. It has to be a low profile. If you put a thicker profile, it will not fit. So you can the lowest profile that you can go is up to two terabyte Seagate to have a low profile. So or you can put any SSD up to four terabyte in here because all the SSDs are the low profile. So you grab your SSD drive or a mechanical drive. Make sure the orientation of the SATA and the power connector are in the same way. Now what you need to do: remove four, two screws on this side. Two screws in here and grab the metal bracket, put it over on this one and put the screws on top. So you can do that way. Or you can simply just remove it. If you don't want to have an extra storage, you can just remove it and leave the storage right, the cable hanging right there. Nothing is going to happen. Or you can just dis leave it disconnected. So for this video, I'm just going to remove it. But you get the idea. Well, the client doesn't want any storage in here. He just wants a one terabyte NVMe. So I guess he doesn't want the weight, but anyway, so we're going to give everything back together. But usually what I do in here, I'll remove the hard drive and I tape the screws right in here and I'll put the caddy right in place. Maybe he wants to convert the ex this mechanical drive to an external drive. Anyway, so now that we remove this one and we put NVMe in here, or you can have both. Now there's no operating system. I made a video how to create your Windows 10 USB boot drive. So you can follow that link in my video description to create your Windows 10 USB boot drive. And I made a video how to install it properly. But right now we're going to put it back together. I'm going to show you how to get to the Windows USB boot drive. So what we're going to do, we're going to put the cover on top. And we're going to push the side, make sure you hit those click. First, let's go ahead and put these uh, screws at the back row, tighten them up. Go ahead and put the two screws on the side. And the short screw goes right over in the middle. Now that we got this one in here, you're going to open it up. If you see any openings right in the corner, you just want to pinch them together. Like in here, I don't, here, right, there's an opening right here. And I'm just going to pinch it together and it's going to go back together. Now, I don't know if there's any battery left in here and the keyboard dust even all over the screen. But we're going to clean up the screen quickly. This screen, it is very really reflective. So we're going to put the USB inside the port right there. And we're going to power on. And once you power on, you're going to tap on F12. Keep tapping on F12 until you see a boot menu. So once because we remove the battery and we put it back together, it might take a little longer. 
So, but you should see our logo. There we go. F12, preparing to boot menu. And now from this menu, we're gonna choose the USB boot drive, which is uh, my Kingston Travel uh, USB boot drive. And the other one, ADATA SX8200, that's the, the NVMe drive. So I wanna choose the USB boot drive and press enter. Now it's gonna start booting up through my USB boot drive and it's gonna take you to the installation in the Windows. You can follow my other videos on how you install the Windows on your uh, their laptop. Pretty much in here, it's just going to take me through the installation guide. You might see a few lines on the bottom in here. It's normal for the Dell BIOS to do this, but once it goes to the installation screen, it's going to go away. So don't be paranoid. So you see this kind of wiggly circles in here. So don't worry about that because it's still working. It's still reading my USB. So that's nothing to be worried about. I'm just gonna wait for it to go to the Windows boot screen. I mean, to Windows installation. All right, if you guys have any question or requests, feel free to leave them in a video comment and I'll try to answer them as soon as I can. And as always, thanks for watching and I hope to see you guys in my next video.